When I, when I think about this year and these past couple months, we have had to rewrite our strategy and our plan so many times. And that idea of looking at going back to the research has been absolutely important. And then um, really figuring out how we can change and shift and, and work together in that way. Today's episode is brought to you by Relic. As many of you know, I own an advertising agency called Relic, and we work specifically with tourism destinations. If there's any of you that are struggling with what to do next, or you've tried agencies that don't specialize in tourism, or or if you've been using the local flavor for years and years and you're just looking for something new, I would say give us a call. Give us the opportunity to take a look at your plan, see what you're doing, Use our tourism knowledge and industry specialty to examine everything from your brand to your tactical execution and make recommendations of how to help. We'll do that assessment for free. We'll give you those recommendations for free. And if you like what we say, maybe you can hire us to to execute on those plans. So kind of a risk-free opportunity to have us take a holistic look at everything you're doing, provide some recommendations, and you can kind of see us in action. If you're interested in having us do something like that, please send me an email directly at adam at relicagency.com. I would love to set that up with my team. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Destination Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Stoker. I'm excited to be with you today. We've got a great show coming up for you. Before we do, I just want to remind everybody, if you haven't yet joined the Destination Marketers LinkedIn group, or the Destination Marketer Slack channel, you're missing out on some tangible information from the show that we can't necessarily show over audio. And today, on today's show, we're going to go over some really cool stuff that we're going to post in both of those places. Uh, And so if you'd like to see that, join the Destination Marketers LinkedIn group or Slack channel, uh, and we'll make sure you have access to that content. But without further ado, we have a very special guest today. Her name is Lindsay Normant, and she is from the Virginia Office of Tourism. Lindsay, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, we're excited to have you. And and I want to make sure I get your title correct. You are the brand director at the state of Virginia, right? Yes, that's right. Perfect. Perfect. Well, you're you're a listener of the show, uh, and and you actually reached out to me from listening to the show, and so you kind of know how the beginning of it goes. Uh, we're going to ask you the same questions to get started. We ask everybody else. So, Lindsay, if you could go anywhere in the world, what is your dream destination? Where would that be? All right. Um, let's see. I've been trying to think about this question, Adam, and it, you know it's a tough one. I think being in the travel business, we have quite a bucket list, but. I will say my husband and I had a trip planned actually this past May to Ireland that I was super excited about. We obviously had to cancel it, put it on hold. So that one is, Uh, uh, I know, (laughs) but (laughs) it'll be the first place we go to when we feel like it's it's safe, safe to do so. Um, But, you know, I was looking forward to uh, driving around the country and seeing just beautiful landscape that I can't even imagine and drinking pints of beer and, you know, all of that fun stuff. Um, so that's, that's an immediate, immediate bucket list place. I think, um, my, my other one has always been Thailand. I just, I really want to get there. I hope I get there soon. Um, I think it's kind of the, the best of, of all trips wrapped into one country. So it's, it's on my bucket list for sure. Okay, so my little brother went to Thailand this year, and he oh, goes yeah. on and on and on about how amazing it was. Uh, it's definitely something that wasn't on my list and has recently been added to my list because it just sounds like an incredible trip. It really does. I'm so jealous of your brother. I um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, being able to to go and see, like, the, the beautiful temples and and elephant sanctuaries and then um i'm a huge city traveler i love big cities so bangkok is is terrifying and thrilling all at the same time to me it's like so so much there um i I would love to see it and and then obviously the beaches i mean the exotic tropical beaches of thailand just kind of seem like uh paradise so yeah hopefully um sooner rather than later i can make it there (laughs) Great. I'll give you the one downside of that trip for him. He was bitten by a monkey and was he had to go get a, a rabies shot while he was out there. And so oh. it was a pretty uncomfortable situation. But other than that, he was fine. 
So just, you know, watch out for the monkeys while you're there. <laughs> That's well, he was he that. was specifically told, "Don't let the monkeys climb on you." And what did he do? Yeah, he he let the monkeys <laughs> climb on him, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, what a what a terrible part of the trip. Um, yeah, that would not be fun. You know, my I'm not enthusiastic about super long trips, uh, flights, flights, super long flights, and so that is also a, a, like Thailand. I don't think I could get any further from from Virginia, which is good and bad uh, when you think about a big trip. <laughs> Um, yeah. Do but, you know how long that trip is yet? Oh my gosh. When I was looking at flights, it was, I mean, it would definitely take me a full day to get there wow. on a plane. So, um, yeah, it's a long flight. <laughs> nice. And going back to Ireland, uh, mm -hmm. what, what is it about Ireland that, that draw, I mean, you had booked a trip. So what, what mm -hmm. is drawing you to Ireland? Um, that's a good question. I, uh, just, have never been to um, a place like Ireland. Like, let's see. That, that's a good question. I I'm very intrigued by by the landscape there. Just being okay. able to um, get in a car. Our, our trip was, you know, get a car and drive around Ireland. And I very much like that sort of travel where we um, have our own freedom and it's just uh let's go on this adventure and and see different small towns and and be kind of immersed into that culture so i was really looking forward to just um exploring on our own um i've heard that the people are so nice and lovely and i was really looking forward to really like meeting people and and um from what i hear they really embrace you know Tourists coming in. We'll see what happens <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> but but being able to to really kind of immerse in that culture, from what I hear, is just so so nice and fun, and, um, uh, beautiful. So I I will say it was probably a different trip. I know I said I love big cities, so I do like the hustle and bustle of of going to places. This was going to feel very much like a, a more um, relaxed kind of uh, go at our own pace, small towns, things like that, <laughs> small villages. Awesome. Oh, I hope you get to book that trip again. Yeah, it, it'll happen. It'll happen soon. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Well, let's talk about a trip you actually got to take. What's What's your favorite place you've ever visited? Yeah, I, um, you know, my my husband and I for our honeymoon, we we did that the Italy trip. You know, we we went to Italy. We drove around Tuscany and went out to the coast. So that's that's super um, special and a great trip. And we. Um, visited, you know, went to different vineyards and it was just, it was so beautiful. We ate and drank and, and just had the best time. I also recently, I went with my sister, we met up in Chicago and I had, I had the best time in Chicago. I just think it is, it was such a fun destination, such a fun trip. Um, it was really kind of, um, I, I didn't know what to expect. I'd never been to Chicago. I go to New York a lot. My sister lives in New York. So for us to kind of explore a new city and a different city was really fun. So those kind of stand out as, you know, Italy was just epic and beautiful and just one of those once in a lifetime trips that, that you get to do. And then on the flip side, I really do love kind of seeing uh, big cities and, and traveling around around that. So Chicago was awesome. It was so much fun. Great. Great. Okay. I've got to ask, when you were in Chicago, did you go to Giordano's? I didn't. I didn't. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Lindsay. <laughs> what did I miss? What did I miss? So, Giordano's, when I was in Chicago, that's the, the pizza joint that we went to. And it is, to this day, one of my best pizza memories that, <laughs> that I ever had. Uh, oh my such God. good pizza. Yep. Next time you go, let, let's get you to Giordano's. I will. Absolutely. Listen, it's on my list. It, it, it is such an easy flight from uh, Richmond where I'm at. Um, so that's the other thing is like, I can get to Chicago so easily. It, I will, I will be going back. So I promise you, Adam, next time I will, uh, I will put that on my list. I will try that pizza. I'll get back to you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I, you won't regret it. We'll put it that way. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Well, Lindsay, I know that uh, you're a listener of the show. I'd love to hear just kind of how did you discover the show and, and you know, what what made you continue to listen? Yeah, I, um, you know, I was a little bit when I when I found your podcast, 
um, which was not that long ago. I was kind of kicking myself that I did not find this earlier. It, it has been so helpful and, and great to listen to other people that I know and don't know in the industry and, and that they're tackling a lot, a lot of the same issues and situations that, that I'm going through. I, I got cued off by a colleague of mine, Catherine O'Donnell at Richmond Region Tourism about DMOU with Bill Geist. And I looked at that podcast, then realized um, there were quite a few really great podcasts dealing with destination marketing. And so I, I started listening to yours and it has been, um, I'm, I'm taking so many walks right now, you know, but staying at home more like everyone else. Yeah. So I've, I've been binge listening kind of to all of the past episodes and it's, it's been a really, uh, really great way, especially right now to hear what other, other destinations are doing, uh, during the pandemic, but then also listening to great episodes before that of, of just people that I truly admire in, in the industry. Awesome. Well, we sure appreciate you listening. That That's for sure. And a great place to start and, and dip your toe in Destination Podcast is DMOU. Bill does such a great job with the show. So uh, glad glad you were able to find these resources and, and start taking advantage of them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, before that, I think I was just listening to crime podcasts and Walking around listening to true crime podcasts can get a bit creepy. So I needed, I needed something else uh, to listen to to brighten my walks, you know. After the show, we'll chat a little bit more about a few of my favorite crime podcasts that can maybe darken your walks again. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Let's let's dive in a little bit to your background and, and let everybody get to know you and how you got into tourism. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was thinking a little bit about that. I know that a lot of people in, in the industry have a same, the same kind of uh, initial answers is, you know, I had no idea this industry existed. And that is true for me as well. I graduated in 2007 from JMU, which is here in Virginia. And I immediately got a job as a graphic designer. So I kind of started out in that route. My, um, I graduated in uh, with a degree in media arts and design. And so it was really kind of a um, all encompassing degree that touched on different elements of design, media, public relations. I learned website design, advertising. So it was a, a fantastic degree from JMU. It, it really allowed me a couple of different outlets. So I went with the design <laughs> outlet first. Um, of course, that was 2007 get to 2008, the recession hits. So I, I was in my job for about a year before, um, before the recession hit and uh, they laid off a lot of people at, at the company. And so, so from there, I, I was laid off trying to figure out what to do. I actually got, um, I got a job and, you know, looking back on, on your journey, it's interesting how things connect, but I ended up just taking a job as a temporary temp job at um, a law office, um, just helping helping with the office work, you know. And this is special, it, it was a special um, law office in that they only dealt with um, cases with motorcycle accidents. So oh, all of, yeah, it was, it was very, in terms of, I look back, and it, and it really taught me without me knowing about like kind of niche targeting, honestly, like look, working for this, this law office, only dealing with motorcycle accidents. I ended up staying at the law office. I, I became the receptionist and I stayed there for about a year, almost two years. And it was um, amazing to um, really know so much about, uh, learn so much about a lifestyle I, I had no idea existed, right? Like, or not existed, but I didn't know much about motorcycles and people who rode motorcycles. And so with my job there, they actually allowed me to work as a uh, help out a lot on case management. So the paralegals, I worked side by side with them a lot, managing different cases. And what really, what that allowed me to do is, is it's so interesting how um, that role that I had as kind of a case manager it's really similar to a role in an agency where you have clients, you have, you know, certain projects that, that you're kind of pushing through. So kind of learning the basics of managing clients and just kind of that basic workload, it allowed me to hop over to a, a marketing agency. And I, you know, started very 
low level as um, an account in the account side, kind of like an account manager assistant, if you will, and worked my way up. Um, so kind of looking at that, I, I know this is a long way of me saying, I, I finally kind of looped my way back in, into marketing. I, I worked at this agency, again, dealing with very niche targeting. We, um, all of the uh, marketing that we did, all of our clients were colleges and universities. And so okay. um, we built campaigns and helped colleges and universities help with their enrollment, help with their marketing, all of that. Um, so that was that's kind of my, my baseline of how I, I kind of cut my teeth, if you will, or, or learned a lot about marketing. And um, after spending a few years at that agency, um, I a friend of mine told me about a role at Virginia Tourism. Again, it was a, a part-time temp position um, in the in the brand department. I took it immediately. Um, it sounded amazing. I didn't really know everything with it and it was a part-time job, but I knew I wanted to get my foot in the door. And after about a year of working part-time, they were able to bring me on full-time. Um, so I just started as as like a brand manager or um, it, at Virginia Tourism and, and have been there almost eight years now, which has been fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. And fun to hear how you, you took the part-time job, took a chance on that and Man, it changed your career. And I hear so many of those stories, how the, you know, taking the low paying option or, or you know, making it, taking a risk here or there just changes the course of, of people's careers and lives and, and cool to hear how it did that for you. Yeah, it is. I, I think that's what I tell a lot of people is a lot of times it makes sense your path, trying to figure out which way to go and which opportunities to take. But I, I feel like looking back, you can realize how they laddered up to to get you to where you are and I'm super fortunate I was able to kind of make that transition and and find find where I'm at now it's it's been fantastic awesome okay well tell us a little bit about your role as brand director and what that entails for the state of Virginia sure um I uh, <laughs> I don't know why this seems like a loaded question it's my job <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so in, in my position um, as brand director, I, I kind of I mainly oversee what we do from the paid advertising side, but I certainly have a hand in, in everything that our brand touches. And um, so from paid advertising, I work very closely. We have our agency of record is the Martin Agency, which is in Richmond. I can walk well when we were in the office. Um, we are like, you know, five minute walk away from the agency, which has been fantastic. Just one um, of the most legendary agencies in the world. Not a big deal, right? Yeah, <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> they are, they are so wonderful. We we're so fortunate um, to to have this partnership, and yeah, they they do amazing work. They are truly passionate about Virginia's for lovers, and with a good reason. They um they actually created they came up with the Virginia's for lovers slogan fifty years ago. Um, no way. Yeah. So. There is a really fantastic story of, uh, you know, they kind of started started the, the slogan, came up with it. At the time, they were known as Martin and Waltz Agency, now the Martin Agency, created it in 1969. They were the uh, Virginia Tourism's agency of record for quite a few years back in the 60s and 70s. Um, for whatever reason, you know, um, parted ways. Um, when I came on board eight years ago, we were working with a different agency and um, quite a few, I think right around 2018, um, we were looking for a new agency. We were up, you know, for um, submitting our uh, submitting an RFP and we were coming up on our landmark year. 2019 was the 50th anniversary of Virginia's for Lovers and it just worked out. I mean, it was so, it was almost poetic just how it worked out that Martin Agency came and, and pitched and uh, did a fantastic job. And um, we were able to hire them in, right before we were going to celebrate this great uh, landmark year, 50th anniversary. So it was a great story, great celebration to have, uh, have us kind of reunited in this big year. Awesome. Awesome. And you know what? I want you to tell me more about the evergreen tagline that you have, Virginia's for lovers. Not many places can say... They've had the same tagline for 50 years. We're going to take a little break. And when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll dive deeper into that brand message that you have. Sounds good. 
You guys, I have been working on something for the last six months that has been such a giant project, but I'm so proud of it. I, I'm excited to announce that I've just released my book. It's called Touch Points, and it's the Destination Marketer's Guide to Brand Evaluation and Enhancement. And it is a comprehensive guide for destinations to look at their brand, evaluate what you've done, and make a very clear and detailed plan of action of how to fix it. And it's, look, I'm biased, right? Because I wrote it, but I think it's so good. I think it's a great guide, and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. And I wanted to tell you guys about it. It's available on Amazon. Search Touch Points by Adam Stoker, and you'll be able to get that book for your destination. And I think it's going to be, especially for, for anyone that is trying to look at their brand holistically, this is the book for you. So check it out. Okay, Lindsay, so let's talk about the, the tagline, Virginia is for lovers. I've got to imagine there's a lot of benefits and brand equity that come along with having a tagline that's evergreen like you have, but there's also some challenges that come along with it too. So, so tell me a little bit about the, the dynamics of your brand message. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, the brand Virginia's for Lovers is iconic, and it's you know it's amazing. I I feel so fortunate to have this job. That my job is is to, you know, be be the protector, if you will. Or I, I get to work with this brand that that people know, and um, and it has survived fifty years and is still you know running strong. Um, the the challenges for sure are that. Um, we, we do have a very recognized brand and that's fantastic. And when, you know, you, you could go almost anywhere in the country and people will recognize Virginia is for lovers. They, they maybe have heard of it. So there's high recognition there and that's, that's really fantastic. But what our challenge has always been is that people do not always connect it to travel. Um, they look at it as kind of this quirky saying. They see it on T-shirts. They want a T-shirt, which is fantastic. But um, they don't always know that it is our travel brand, that we are Virginia Tourism. We are the ones who are trying to promote Virginia's for Lovers, and, and we want you to see it and connect it to travel and to come and travel to Virginia. Also with that, it's, it is a, a, a brand and a slogan that is, is 50 years old. And so this idea of always trying to keep it fresh and relevant um, for the next generations coming up, that's, that's a, a, a huge uh, priority for us, for sure, is to make sure that, that people connect it to travel and that our brand is remaining relevant for, for people, that it doesn't just um, kind of go away or, or you know, lose it, its, its importance in people's lives. Yeah, that's got to be an interesting thing to try to navigate that, you know, if it's been around 50 years, you've actually had your target persona go through multiple life cycles. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. like if, if you were targeting baby boomers 50 years ago, uh, and, and no, you wouldn't be targeting baby boomers 50 years ago. It's the generation before that, right? So, right. so right. you know, tailoring the same message to new personas over the years can't be an easy task. So I, I guess my question is, how do you keep that fresh? How, how do you, while keeping the core message the same, which by the way, I totally think is a great idea, especially with something as strong as the Virginia's for Lovers brand, but how do you keep it fresh? What a, what a challenge for you in your role. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a small challenge. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because what, what we see is the older generations have such nostalgia connected to Virginia's for Lovers. And they they remember, I mean, especially when we celebrated the 50th anniversary, we we heard from so many people who grew up seeing the, the brand and um, they remember it and they remember growing up and, and seeing the commercials or they had the bumper sticker and, they, you know, so cool, but um, that generation is moving on. The ones that remember the brand and have that nostalgia with it, um, the next generations are coming and we need to figure out a way to um, remain relevant to them. They're not gonna have the nostalgia that they have, that the other generations necessarily have um, growing up and, and remembering when the brand came out, like was created. So um, 
so definitely, you know, we, we do a ton of research surrounding the brand itself. Obviously we do a ton of research with our destination, but also with the brand and like, what does it mean to people? What do you think it means? What, you know, what does it make you want to do or think of? And so we, we do a lot of, of different surveys, a lot of different research. You know, one thing that we encountered a lot was um, people really connected it to romance to honeymoons, um, that was one part. The other was people just thought it was a quirky saying. They had no idea what it meant. They did not know that it was connected necessarily to Virginia and to travel. They just thought it was a weird little saying. And so um, our strategy continues to evolve. When, when I first got to Virginia Tourism, we did a lot actually. Uh, we created different sub-brands in a way, and this was really trying to get away from that. Um, we're not just about romance. You know, we're not for lovers, actual lovers, which is what a lot of people thought was all about romance and honeymoons. Um, so what we did was we we really wanted to show people that Virginia is for lovers is about anything, anything that you love to do on a vacation. We have that in Virginia. And what what we created is different sub brands. Virginia is for outdoor lovers, for food lovers, for wine lovers, um, music lovers. So, based on the research of what we knew people wanted, what we knew Virginia as a destination could offer and really true authentic experiences such as wine, we wanted to create that sub brand. And we spent a lot of time actually putting out campaigns surrounding these sub brands so that we were truly defining for people like this is what it means. This is what it means. This is what we have to offer. It's almost like just right in front of you. You know, um, we've since kind of moved from that strategy and we continue to evolve as, as we're as we're seeing, you know, what people think about the brand and what we want to say. But it's a great question that that you asked in terms of how do we continue to help define and help create relevance around around this brand? Awesome. And, and I love that you're doing so much research and I know that based on that research, you had prepared and actually launched an incredible campaign this year that ran for a total of four days. Do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, that campaign and the process and, and you know, what your experience was like there? Yeah, yeah, I will. I know. I, I'm sure that story is, is similar for a lot of other destinations. Um we had, we started doing a lot of work when uh, the Martin Agency came on and, and looking at um, 2019 was all about launching out our uh, the 50th anniversary of our brand. So that was fantastic. We were looking ahead to 2020 of uh, what we wanted to do for the brand and for our campaign. And, um, you know, that idea of relevance for our brand, how it fits in. Um, we, we really started to look at our strategy and helping to define what Virginia is and what Virginia's for lovers means for people in, in the travel space. And so, you know, it's, it's no surprise that Virginia as a destination, we are, we are rooted in history. We are built on the foundation of history. We, we have so many historic experiences around. I mean, when we're all in, you know, in elementary school, we hear about history uh, that, most likely started in, in Virginia. And so as a destination, that is the first thing that we are rooted in history, um, but we're also rooted in authenticity. And I know that that word is thrown around a lot, especially in right. this case. But why we do like to use that is because I, I think when you have a, a destination that's so deeply rooted in history, it lends itself to authenticity. And, and just being able to say that, you know, some of uh, the first um, grapes grown in the U.S. They were planted in Virginia. So that idea of like, um, we have the history here to prove it, that makes it a truly authentic experience. When you can go to a place that, you know, these were some of the first vines that were planted here. Or so, you know, it's, it, it really plays off each other. So we felt really good about being able to, to say, as a destination, like we have history and we're authentic because of that. And so that really became kind of that that baseline of our, our strategy. And, and what we started to see as an insight was looking at that time period at 2018, 2019, what we were seeing is that um, we are surrounded by this technology that allows us every sort of convenience in, in the world. Like if you want food delivered to your door, you can order it, you know, from your phone and it arrives at your door and you can binge watch anything you want on Netflix, you know, with the click of a button. Um, we're constantly connected to our phones and our devices. And so 
what we were finding is that this kind of insight of, of what's happening in the world right now has left a bit of a void in, in people's lives. And we're so connected to our technology and to these this these things that are making our life convenient that it's it's left this void of true authentic connection and uh, like in real life connection, not you know connections on on Instagram or anything like that. So what we were leaning into with that strategy was um, really trying to position Virginia as the place to reconnect. And we felt that was very true because we are a destination that's rooted in this authenticity. And um, our campaign was really centered on positioning disconnect to reconnect. So like disconnect from the chaos of your life, reconnect in Virginia on these experiences that that will bring you back, you know, kind of allow you these these real true connections. And so we were we were very excited about kind of landing on that strategy where uh, we were going to go with that. Yeah, the the premise of that campaign makes so much sense to me, right? Of of disconnect to reconnect. And one of the things that I love is is the way you guys structured your especially your video uh, assets for this. The you, you had a really unique uh, video campaign for this. So do you, do you want to dive in a little bit to to what that creative was like? Yeah, absolutely. This was uh, such a great idea on on behalf of of the Martin Agency. I have to give them all of the glory on this. Uh, they really push us to you know keep the creative uh, fresh. And so we've decided to, we wanted to find um, uh, real families, um, not actors, so not hire actors. Let's find real families who had not been to Virginia and let's bring them to Virginia and let's film their experience. Um, and from there, we will we will turn that into our commercials and our campaign. And so the, the summer uh, the summer spot that, that we created um, all focused on on family travel and uh, we found this really great family out on the west coast um, they'd never been to Virginia on top of that they were a newly blended family so um, the parents had children from different marriages they are now married and this family had never been on a vacation as this like newly blended family before um, so we brought them out to Virginia and we filmed kind of their whole experience here. Um, on top of that, just to kind of reinforce that, you know, disconnect, you're gonna disconnect on this trip. We uh, we took away their devices when they when they got to Virginia, um, which- That had to uh, be an interesting experience. <laughs> it was, it was. The, uh, the kids were quite grumpy about it. Like they were not happy that we were, <laughs> that we were, as you can imagine, um, taking away their phones, like they love their phones. And so, yeah, the, it, we filmed, obviously we, we filmed all of it. So we filmed that part of, you know, taking away their phones and the kids are grumpy. And, but what ended up happening was exactly, you know, what does happen on a trip. And I, I think what's really like true to anything with travel is you want to disconnect from whatever is going on in your life and, and truly connect and be present on a trip. And what is shown in that spot is this family uh, for the first time, they're all on a trip together and they're not on their phones. Um, and they, you know, it's four kids all under the age of 15. And so having them all together, you can see through the spot that they're really kind of coming together and, and enjoying these experiences uh, as a family. So um, it was it was a really fun spot to shoot and put together. Um, and I, I think it turned out well. I was super happy, super happy with that one. Awesome. Awesome. And you had a second video as well that I really liked. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that second video? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was um, our fall spot. In the fall, we really shift and we focus on couples. And uh, we see a ton of couple travel in Virginia, especially to the mountains. Um, so we really like to push like the, you know, the mountain getaways, um, vineyards, wine, culinary, all of that great things, all of those great things. Um, so we found a couple, we found a family, uh, they lived in Texas, they had uh, four small children, all under the age of five, I think. So um, they were in desperate need of a vacation, they had not been on a trip in, in since they had children. And so we brought them, they, they left the kids um, with family, and we brought them out to the mountains of Virginia, and um, they just kind of enjoyed this amazing couples get away. We took them to this great resort named Primlin out, out in the mountains. Um, and 
the disconnect story there, it was not, we didn't, we did not take away their phones. I think they actually would have enjoyed that. They would have gladly, you know, handed over their phones. But uh, the disconnect there was to disconnect from kind of the everyday chaos and, and to really reconnect with each other um, since they had not had that time yet. Um, so we filmed that spot. Again, I, I was so happy. It was a very challenging spot uh, uh, to shoot because of the weather, but um, we did it. And so it was a big like hooray moment when, when we finished that one. Awesome. And both of those videos are videos that we can post in the LinkedIn group and the Slack channel, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We um, hope to have that out next year. So it'll be a, a nice sneak peek, but you know, they are ready, ready for, um, for people to see it. Awesome. Awesome. We'll get, we'll get those posted. So if you're listening and you want to see those spots, uh, fantastic creative, uh, check it out when, when we get this posted, uh, when, when the show goes live. So we'll plan on that. Oh, okay. So brilliant campaign runs for four days. Talk to me about the pivot that took place from there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like like everyone, you know, we we start our our campaign um, for summer in March, um, so it went out for four full days um, before everything really uh, started to happen um, with with COVID nineteen, and so we felt like it was the responsible thing to just kind of pause and, and halt our campaign um, until we saw what was really going on. So we pulled back. Um, our hope was truly to, you know, oh, we'll wait, we'll wait a month and we'll see. And I think everyone's <laughs> everyone's thought process back in March was like that, like, oh, this will be a short term, a short term situation and we'll get back to it. Um, but as, as uh, you know, <laughs> little did we know. <laughs> right. Right. Um, just it, it's actually so funny to kind of think back on on that that time and um I was so upset about pulling the campaign and really did not want to. And, um, you know, looking back, it's, it's just crazy to think about our mindset then versus now so much what we have learned and, and what we know, but we did, uh, we pulled everything and we started to watch the, the research. Honestly, I mean, that, that was the one thing that, that we could all rely on is what's going on. How are people thinking? What should we do right now? And um, a big question that we asked ourselves was like, when it's irresponsible um, for people to travel and dine out, like what what do we say? Like this idea of responsibility never came so front and center for us I, as a travel brand. I mean, there's always a responsibility there, but truly, like this idea of what what are we doing right now? Like what how do we position ourselves? Um, how, how do we change our strategy? So we we were definitely seeing a lot of the same research that I think. Um, everyone was seen in, in the industry. And we work with a great uh, research um, uh, firm right now, SIR. They were really pulling together all of the research that was out there. And we landed on a few insights that, you know, consumers really miss traveling. Like everyone misses traveling. They want to get it back out there, but we're, we're nervous and we're scared and there's fear there. So, um, you know, trying to promote these like low risk experiences really came front and center for us. The other thing is obviously the shorter road trip type style of, of travel was going to be really key. And um, we know that lots of lots of places are, are, are going to be promoting this idea of shorter road trips. Um, so how can we make that fit into what we're doing in, in Virginia? And, and we really wanted to key into that idea of the low risk travel experiences. That was really important to to be able to lean on the safety and responsibility so that we can what we're promoting we feel we feel good about it like we feel good that we're going to ask virginians to you know get in their cars and go experience these things that we know are kind of more of those low risk safe experiences got it got it i i love it uh i i think that's a, a great pivot and the good news is you can kind of hold on to the the previous creative for you know hopefully when we settle down into whatever this new normal turns out to be Right. Uh, let's, let's talk about something that you've done in, in the wake of this crisis that I really like, and, and that's that you've created a grant program so that local DMOs can get support from the state through this program. Would you mind describing that program to us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, everything, all of this kind of launched over the past few weeks, actually. So it's all very brand new and we're so excited about it that 
the overall campaign is, is called Wonder Love. Um, we are kind of playing off of the word wonder lust, which means a strong desire to travel. We shifted that to be in line with our brand, Wonder Love. Right. Um, you know, really meaning a strong desire to travel in Virginia. And so as we're crafting this campaign and, and thinking about, okay, we really want to focus on road trips and these uh, great itineraries that, that can focus on things that we know people want to go and see in, in a safe way. We started to, um, you know, we're, we're talking a lot to our industry this whole time. I mean, since everything started to happen in March, we are talking constantly to our partners. We have a weekly call with our, our partners that they can get on. We're talking about stuff that's going on. We're hearing from them. We're doing surveys. We put out surveys uh, to our partners to find out like, what is the struggle that you're um, going through most. And, you know, they were just as concerned as we were about what do we say? How do we get back out there? Budgets are tight. Um, so this is, this is definitely a model that we have done with some of our other campaigns as well um, in the past that we really like to um, have our partners participate. So finding ways and opportunities for our, our partners to participate in our campaigns. With this, it, it was um, such a great way to bring in our partners. Every destination around Virginia um, can put together a road trip and an, and an itinerary around their destination. And so we put together this grant to be part of our campaign. Um, it was only for DMOs. They could apply. Uh, they would have to participate in the Wonder Love campaign. So they would have to uh, put together their own road trip or itinerary and um, use the creative that we have and use that to kind of talk about their own destination. And um, we ended up having 90 uh, DMOs apply and uh, they all got awarded uh, a grant. And so we are- So what kind of money are we talking? Like, like how much money was available for each local DMO? Yeah, so um, the grant was for $10,000. So okay. um, each awardee was awarded ten thousand uh, dollars to support their program and you know this was something we we have a fantastic uh, department at Virginia Tourism uh, the partnership marketing department I mean their whole a lot of what they do is, is doing grants and, and working with the partners and development and so um, you know we all really took a look at what was important here in terms of budget and helping um, our partners not only for the campaign that we have but for them to be able to latch onto the campaign, we're all saying the same thing and giving them the money to put a little bit behind um, uh, to help reach, uh, expand the reach of, of this message. Okay, Lindsay, I know we have so many local DMOs that are listening. Let's say that I want to go to my state as a local DMO and say, hey, I've heard of this program and I'd like to see if we can implement something like that within our state. How would you like to be approached? You know, you're at the state level. You kind of get hit up by DMOs here and there asking for support. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the best way to approach this with your state and try to see if you can't pioneer a, a similar program uh, in another state? Yeah, that's a great question. I, um, I was thinking a little bit about how, I, like I mentioned, we this is a model that we have uh, done for several of our campaigns. And it, it really has started with the fact that um, we're communicating with our partners a lot and they're telling us what they need. And for a long time at, at Virginia Tourism, this question of um, if we put out a campaign and creative and asked our partners to use it, would they? You know, um, like being a part of, of these campaigns that have a grant with it, we are asking you to use our creative. So sometimes um, a destination's uh, branding or logo might be kind of uh, not front and center. Instead, it's it's this creative, and this in this case, it's Wonder Love. You know that that creative is front and center. And so, for a long time, we were talking about: is this something that could actually work with partners like that? And what we found is that they were telling us, they were saying, "Yes, we actually would. We want to be a part of what you're doing. We would, you know, latch on to this creative um, in order to uh, be part of a larger campaign." And it was a great thing to hear. It, it has clearly shown us. We um, we did a campaign a few years ago, Crush Friday, um, similar similar situation where we had a grant with it. We had all of the creatives uh, templated out for partners to use. 
Uh, we did the same thing with our 50th anniversary and then with, with this. And so we found that this model works really well when we can help provide uh, messaging, creative, and then a little bit of money to incentivize and to expand that reach all under the same goal of us us saying the same message. Um, and I think that's that's really important when you have a lot of destinations kind of all together, trying to work together instead of us all saying different things. I trust it's to say the same message, but make it about yourself in that way too. Um, that's what we found has worked so well. So I would tell the DMO to not be shy about telling your state what you think could work, what you want, what you need, because we were surprised to hear that, oh, they'd be willing to, to join this creative um, and be a part of this. Uh, and, and it has worked out so well. Awesome. Awesome. Great advice. Uh, you know, we, we obviously could talk about this all day because, you know, this is such great information, but, but we probably need to, to wind it up for the episode today. So tell me a little bit, if you were to boil your advice for any destination that's listening down to one simple takeaway, what would that be? Oh gosh, that's a big question. I, um, you know, this year has really, really taught us a lot about the pivot. I've been calling it the year of the pivot. Uh, we've had to be so flexible and I've had to learn that myself too, to be very flexible. And so, um, we had such a solid plan laid out for this year. I mean, it was, we were so excited about it. And um, what we needed to do was we needed to rely on the research of what the research was telling us, not what we were feeling of like, no, I want to still put out this campaign, which was me, you know, me wanting to say like, oh, we worked so hard, let's do this. But really looking at what's happening, what is the research telling us and being able to, to pivot in that way. And um, I, I don't know if that's anything new or helpful, but I think when I when I think about this year and these past couple months, we've had to rewrite our strategy and our plan so many times. And that idea of looking at going back to the research has been absolutely important. And then um, really figuring out how we can change and shift and, and work together in that way. So I, I feel so encouraged by what we're doing with Wonderlove because we're relying on exactly what we know is happening right now and, and the outlook. And then we're joining our partners all together. And we're going to be doing this together, working together to kind of get through the, the rest of this year. Awesome. Great advice. Be willing to change when it's required and be willing to collaborate. Uh, I, I think both of those are great pieces of advice. Lindsay, thanks for being here today. We really appreciate you taking the time and sharing the knowledge and experience that you have uh, all the way from Virginia today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Adam. And it's great to speak with you. You too. You too. Well, everybody, this has been another great episode of the Destination Marketing Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please make sure to leave us a rating or a review. Uh, that helps us continue to grow our reach and keep the show going. So thanks, everybody, for listening, and we'll see you next week. Okay, everybody, we've been talking about recovery for a while now, and my team at Relic has been working on recovery campaigns for several destinations over the last couple of months. They've actually developed a pretty amazing, we'll call it an algorithm, to know when it's safe to do acquisition marketing in a market. And so what I mean by that is you've got government regulations, you've got, uh, you know, how is the virus affecting that market, whether there's been a decrease in cases or a decrease in deaths in that market, when is it safe to advertise, hey, come to our destination? Uh, like I said, our team has come up with this algorithm to provide that information for you, and we're offering a free market report. We're calling it Recovery Triggers, and if you'd like a free Recovery Trigger report for your target market where you want to draw visitors from, please email me directly at adam at relicagency.com. Or you can go to recoverytriggers.relicagency.com and we'll get you set up with a free report and we even have the ability to send you a weekly recurring report so you can see what's happening in that market on a weekly basis and make sure you're launching your acquisition campaign at the perfect time.